So RSA uh, algorithm is one of the important algorithms in cryptography. It's known as RSA because it was proposed by three computer scientists. Uh, uh, they were uh, Rivest, uh, Shamir, and Edelman. Now, it um, this algorithm has a number of steps, and it begins with uh, choosing two large prime numbers. Uh, let's say those prime numbers are represented by P and Q. Then when we have uh, chosen the prime numbers P and Q, we calculate the value N. And uh, in this case, N will be equal to P times Q. And thereafter, we calculate the torsion function. So the torsion function is calculated by uh, subtracting P minus 1 and uh, subtracting Q by 1 and then multiplying that. So this is P minus 1 times Q minus 1. Then in step third, we choose E, which we'll be using for encryption. This number E has to be less than N, which we chose in, uh, which we calculated in step second. And it has to be relatively prime to the torsion function phi N. So we have this number, which we'll be using for the encryption. Then uh, using all the information that we have so far, we'll be calculating D, which uh, we'll be using for decryption, uh, such that D is the inverse of uh, E mod uh, 5N. Uh, so that means if we multiply E uh, with D, then it should be congruent to 1 mod uh, phi n. Then using all these uh, values, uh, we can form our public key, which is a function of e and n, and private key is a function of d and n, or sometimes we just represent it with a variable d only. Now once we have all the keys ready, we uh, are eligible to do the encryption and decryption. The encryption is represented with this equation, where C stands for the cryptic text that we obtain by using the uh, public key. Since the public key is uh, the function of E and N, we say we see E and N in this. And M stands for the plain text. And once we uh, obtain the cipher text, this is the cipher text. Then on the receiving side, we want to uh, decipher it or decrypt it back uh, to obtain our plain text again. That's given by uh, which is a function of uh, D and N. Then we have C raised for D mod and this gives us the plain text uh, back. Now, to have a look at it and make sense with a picture, this is how the RSA algorithm works. Suppose Alice wants to communicate to Bob, and there, are also, there is also a likelihood that there is a person here with some malicious intent who wants to, uh, who will want to see the information getting compromised, uh, whatever information is being exchanged between Alice and Bob. So let's say the Alice wants to send some message to Bob. The first thing that he will do is he will encrypt it using the public key. So we have the public key with some function of E and N. And then the plain text will be uh, turned into a uh, cipher text by this equation, which is M raised power E mod N. So this cipher text will be on the channel, which cannot be understood by uh, the hacker or someone who's doing the eavesdropping. Then on the receiving side, when, the, when Bob receives it, to make sense of this, to uh, be it in a human readable form, uh, he will uh, decrypt it using the private key, which is a function of D, or sometimes you can say that it's also a function of D and and so they, uh, he decrypts it and uh, gets the plain text back. Now let's try to have a look at an example uh, where Alice is trying to 
send the hello message to Bob. And let's see how we, how it works uh, using the RSA algorithm. Now in the original RSA algorithm, the number in the step one where we're supposed to uh, choose two prime numbers, those prime numbers are very large. Uh, let's, in our case, choose in the step one, uh, P is equal to seven. Let's choose the value P equal to seven. And Q equal to 11. Both of them are prime numbers. Now for the sake of simplicity, we are choosing these small prime numbers, uh, but still we'll be able to understand how the uh, RSA algorithm works. Then thereafter we calculate the torsion function, which is given, represented by phi of n. And we know n is equal to, since we have p and q, we, have, we know that n is equal to, this gives us n equal to 77. Therefore, phi of n in step two will be equal to p minus one times q minus one. That's equal to six times q minus one is 10, which is equal to 60. Then in step three, we choose E. Since this will be using, used for encryption, that's why we represent it with E. It has to be less than N, so it has to be less than 77 in our case. And it should be relatively prime to phi of n, which means that GCD of phi of n, which is 60, and E has to be equal to 1. Now, one of the one of one such number is 17. So if you look at number 17, it is less than 77. And if you see the GCD of 17 and 60, that will be equal to one. Then in step four, we have to find D. D, as I said, is the inverse of, of uh, E mod This has to be inverse of E mod phi n, or in other words, E times D is congruent to one mod phi of n. Then after this, we know the value of E, which is 17. So 17 times D should be congruent to one mod 60. And the value, one of the values that obeys this congruence, that satisfies this uh, property is D equal to 53. So, so far we have all these values. We have uh, N, we have E, and we have D. Therefore, we can have our public key and we have our private key. Public key will be function of E and N, which means 17 and 77. 
and the private key will be a function of dnn which is 53 and 77 so we have these ready now in st step six we'll do the encryption so encryption is represented by c which is the cipher text m raised power e mod n so in our case this will be equal to m raised power e which is 17 mod 77 likewise when we want to obtain our uh, plain text back to in the decryption m will be equal to c raised power d mod 77 that's equal to c raised power 53 mod 77 So we have all these values ready. We have all the whatever is required to make the RSA algorithm work. We have uh, that available with us. Now let's say uh, Alice wants to send the message hello to Bob. So this is the message that Alice wants to send to the Bob. Now we'll assign a number to each of these letters. Uh, if we assign, let's say, 0 to A and then 1 to B and 2 to C, 3 to D, 4 to E, 5 to F, and so on. And for Z, we'll have 25 for Z. Now, using this, the uh, numbers that we assign to uh, H, E, L, L, O, R, seven, four, eleven, eleven, and fourteen. So for encryption, we know that this is how we'll be using the uh, public key. What we'll get is, suppose we have to encrypt 7 in this case. So C of H will be equal to 7 raised power E, which is 17. Uh, the small E that we kept calculated here, uh, mod 77 similarly c of e will be equal to 4 raised power 17 mod 77 then c of l will be equal to 11 raised power 17 mod 77 again l same thing mod 77 or o the value that we'll get is 14 raised power 17 mod 77 now if you do the calculation and uh, represent this with the lower powers represent 17 uh, since this is of the form of a raised power n mod m and we have seen that the, the if the value is bigger we can represent it with lower powers such as the powers of 2 then if we do that if we represent this with the power of 2 and keep on calculating uh, 
we'll get the value 7 to the power 17 mod 77 to be equal to 28. Then this will be equal to 16. This will be equal to 44. This will be equal to 44. And this will be equal to 42. Now, if uh, you, uh, you do not understand how I calculated this, you can have a look at previous lectures, previous videos where we have uh, discussed in detail how we can uh, represent this power over here uh, using uh, the powers of 2 and then finally getting the value which is of the form of a uh, raised power n mod m. Now, uh, the information that will be available on the channel uh, when once you send the information, once else sends this to Bob, so the thing that he will be able to see is 28, 16, 44, 44, and 42. So this is the cipher text. Now to obtain the main text again back at the receiving end or so that Bob is able to make sense of what it means, he will be using the private key for the decryption <clears throat> and that process converts the cipher text back into the plain text using this equation which is c raised power 53 uh, mod 77 or c raised power d mod 77. So here So this process was encryption. The process of decryption, the process of decryption we have, the, we have 28 and we'll be having raised power 53 mod 77. So this will give us the value seven Likewise, we'll have 16 raised power, 16 raised power 53 mod 77. And this will give us the value 4. Likewise, we have 44 here, 44 raised power 53 mod 77. And it will give us the value 11. And again, 44 raised power 53 mod 77 it will give us the value 11 and finally 42 raised power 53 mod 77 and it will give us the value 14 now if you have a look at this these are the val these are the numbers that we had assigned to these letters hello so that's how Bob is able to decrypt it and is able to see the plain text again. Now this was a, a simple example, an example where we had lower values of P and Q. But our essay is almost unbreakable. It's uh, very uh, difficult to break. To get an idea of this, uh, in 2009, uh, there was an attempt to break this algorithm uh, where the value of n was uh, this big. So the va this was the value of n from here to here and it contained 155 digits. So to find its prime factors, uh, which were this and this. So this, this is P and Q. It took uh, four months to find out that. And the number of computers utilized were 290. And it also uh, used some supercomputer. 
So, uh, so this was just 155 digit, but in RSA algorithm, uh, the value of n has even more digits, which can even range up to 200, 200 if there are 200 digits. So if this took almost a quarter of a year, so this would take even more. So that way it's almost unbreakable. 